peanuts, walnuts, Brazil nuts, hazelnuts, chestnuts. There are so many different kinds of nuts in the world that you could go nuts trying to remember them all. On this podcast, we'll help you keep your nuts in order. And you'll learn some idioms connected to nuts. Welcome to Aprender Inglés con Reza y Craig. Hi, I'm Reza. And my name's Craig. And with nearly 50 years of teaching between us, we'll help you improve your English and take it up to the next level. How are you doing, Craig? I'm doing very well. I'm really happy to be podcasting with you again because we've had a little summer break. This is the first time Reza and I are podcasting for nearly two months, possibly. Yeah, lucky we recorded loads before we we um, had our little break. Loads is another way of saying a lot. We recorded a lot in a oh, in a period of about a month. We recorded what twelve, fifteen, or something. Yeah, so you've been receiving them every week, but we actually recorded those podcasts about two months ago, and we want to apologize for people who have been sending feedback that you may have to wait a few weeks before hearing. And we do keep every piece of voice feedback and email feedback, so you will hear it eventually, but it might be later than normal. So thank you for your patience. What's first this week, Reza? Let's start off with a little bit of feedback. We got a voice message from Alba, who lives in Barcelona. Hello, Reza and Greg. How are you? Um, this is Alba from Barcelona. This is my third audio message. Maybe you are getting tired from me. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I just wanted to share some ideas to talk in your podcast, if you want, for sure. And yes, my, my idea is if you want to talk about pets, um, I have a dog. And what I see here in Barcelona is like every time there is more pet-friendly restaurants, even hotels, or even there is a park for dogs, a water park, you know. And if I go to the town of, my, of the village of my husband, is in Burgos, there is anything about that. <laughs> so there is a big difference. And I wanted you to talk about also how is the difference in, in other countries. For example, I went to France and they had water in the entrance of the supermarket for the, for the dogs. So here this is something that is still is not happening. But let's see. And yes, just that. I hope the summer went well for you guys and you could rest. So I'm sending you a big hug. Take care. Thank you very much, Alba, for your message. And no, we're not getting tired of you. We would never get tired of your messages. Keep sending them. We say tired of, not tired from. So try to remember the preposition there, to get tired of someone or of something. Another thing that involves the word of, you said, Halba, the village of my husband. And we understand you perfectly, but it's far more typical to use the apostrophe S, possessive. So you should say my husband's village. So that's apostrophe S after husband. And yes, the French do love their dogs. I remember that when I visited France, the French do really look after their dogs and there are facilities for dogs everywhere. And I remember the dog hotels. Alba, be careful of the pronunciation of the word hotel. The stress is on the second syllable, not the first. That's a common mistake with Spanish speakers. So it's hotel, stress the second syllable. I remember when I lived in, in Germany, in Berlin briefly, and I saw in some restaurants a sign which really surprised me. To cut a long story short, I can't remember exactly the words written on the sign, but it often said something like, dogs admitted, children no. Really? <laughs> yes, not uncommon in German restaurants. <laughs> they didn't want noisy children about, dogs yes. 
<laughs> There's another thing that you said, Alba, which again, we understood perfectly because your message was very clear. But I wouldn't say it like, like this. You said every time, yeah, every time there's more pet friendly restaurants. Every time, no. Every time is an expression in English, but it doesn't mean what you want to say, I think. You want to say there's more and more pet friendly restaurants. What you mean to say is like every time you go out, for example, you know, so every week or every month, whenever you check, there's more. So we don't say every time for that. We say there's more and more pet friendly restaurants. And that means the number keeps growing. Yeah, I can see the confusion. In Spanish, you might say cada vez. Right. Yeah, yeah, Cause, yeah. Because cada vez does both things, doesn't it, in English? Like, like every time there's the mention of chocolate, Craig uh, says, ah, I'll have some every time. Every there's time. There's no time that he says no. Never, yeah. say, never say no to chocolate. And one other little thing, you were talking about your husband's village, and I think you said there's anything for pets. Any is a tricky word or part of a word. You need to say there's nothing for pets because it's negative. So we put the word any as a negative if the verb is negative. So you could say there isn't anything or you can use a positive verb and use no. So you could say there's nothing. So there isn't anything or there's nothing about pets. And that's very true, isn't it? When you go to smaller places, small towns and villages, the facilities, not only for animals, but for humans as well, it tends to be fewer things available than when you go to a bigger city. So it's there's no surprise that dogs are better catered for. There are more facilities in a bigger city than in a small village. Speaking of Coco, Reza's dog, we did do an episode about a day in the life of Coco, the podcasting dog. So, Alba, you might be interested in listening to that if you haven't heard it before. So go to englishpodcast.com slash 365. And another episode we have done on animals was 97. Veterinary vocabulary and expressions with pets. And to listen to that, Alba, go to englishpodcast.com slash 97. Okay, Craig, let's move on and have a look at our main theme for today, nuts. Yeah, I'm surprised we haven't spoken about nuts before because we are both nuts about nuts, aren't we? We both like them very much. Yeah, I'm nuts about nuts and my father was nuts about nuts. It runs at nuts run in our family. We're going to look first at the five healthiest nuts that you can eat because you probably know that nuts, generally speaking, are quite good for you. They're quite healthy. Do you know what the five healthiest nuts are and in what order? So what is the healthiest nut you can eat? Did you know this, Reza? I didn't. And when I did my internet research, I was really surprised at what I found out. Me too. So let's start from number five. Reza, what is the fifth healthiest nut that you can put into your body? Well, this one didn't surprise me because I did know it was very healthy. We're talking about walnuts. Let me spell that. W-A-L-N-U-T-S. Walnuts. Nuez, as you say in Spanish. They're the ones that look like people's brains. If you open a walnut, it looks like a brain inside. And what's confusing to me with the Spanish translation is that nuez really is nut, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> some, not, well, kind of. I think really nut is better translated as fruto seco. But that can be But doesn't other that things. include raisins, sultanas... Yeah. Dried apricots. It does as well. But so there isn't really a clear word actually for nut in, in Spanish the way we do in English yet, because nuez can be a specific type of walnut, but it's true you can use it to refer to all nuts as well. So if a Spanish person says to you, ¿Quieres un nuez? Are they offering you a walnut or are they offering you any type of nut? You don't know. I reckon they'll be offering you a walnut. You reckon? Most, most likely, yeah. If not, they would probably say queréis frutos secos. Mm -hmm. Probably, yeah. Okay. 
And number four in the list, after walnuts, comes macadamias. And that's not a word I'm used to pronouncing because they're quite expensive. I don't usually buy them. In fact, I think they are the most expensive nuts, aren't they? Yeah, uh, you took the words right out of my mouth. I was going to say that by far the dearest common nut. There may be some really unusual nut we've never heard of, but of the nuts that you can buy in shops, macadamia are by far the most expensive because they're only produced in very, very few places. Australia's one, isn't it? Aren't they indigenous to Australia? Yeah, I think that's the only place that really they were originally indigenous to, but I imagine they're now um, cultivating them in other places because they're worth a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. I was reading, apparently they represent only 1% of all nuts in the world. That's how rare and unusual they are, and that's why they are quite expensive. Number three on our list is a very popular nut. Not that cheap either, but not half as dear. That means there's a big difference. Not half as dear as macadamia. When you say dear, you mean expensive, right? I mean expensive, yeah. D-E-A-R, dear, can mean expensive. But still not cheap. We're talking about hazelnuts. So it's H-A-Z-E-L, nut, hazelnut. Or abillana, as you say in Spanish. And they're very common in chocolate spread such as Nutella which is not my favourite chocolate spread because I'm not very keen on the flavour of nuts mixed with chocolate. And I know it's very popular. You can get chocolate bars with nuts inside. You can get hazelnuts inside chocolate. And Nutella obviously has a hazelnut taste as well. Well, I actually love the taste of nuts mixed with chocolate, but I don't like Nutella because for me, it's just too sweet. There's too much sugar in there. Yeah. If they put hazelnut with chocolate but with not quite as much sugar i might like it but it's just over the top that means it's excessive in its sweetness for me i agree and it's very common here in spain because nutella often appears inside chocolate croissants and chocolate pastries and in bakers you can often get cakes filled with nutella and i don't like it very much what about the next one craig pecans Do you like them? I do like pecans, yes, especially pecan pie, which is a very popular sweet American pie because for some reason I think pecans seem to be more popular in America than they do in Europe. Would you agree with that? Yes. I wonder if they're harvested, if they're produced there. I think they probably are. That that would explain it, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. I know they're very common in the US. So pecan pie is often on the on the list of a dessert menu. So, Craig, that was number two. So what is the healthiest nut of all? Aha, the suspense. We need a drum roll here. What is the healthiest nut that you can eat? It is almonds. Now, there's one thing about almonds, which is spelled A-L-M-O-N-D-S. Some people pronounce the L and some people don't. So that's a question for Reza. Now, when I say that word, I don't pronounce the L. So I say almonds. What do you say? Almonds, the same. I don't pronounce the L. Okay. So, yeah, it doesn't matter. Both are correct. You can say almonds or almonds. What about that famous derivative, something which comes from almonds, marzipan? Do you like that? I do like marzipan very much. I haven't had it for a while, but when I was growing up in the UK, marzipan appeared very often on cakes and especially fruit cakes, fruit cakes with marzipan and icing and dried fruits inside, frutos secos. <laughs> and yeah, I really like marzipan. Do you? No, that's the weird thing. I adore almonds. I mean, I could eat almonds every day of my life. I never get bored of them. But I can't stand marzipan, which is made of almonds. I can't explain it, but I really don't like it. Did your mum ever cook with it? Did she make cakes with marzipan? She always put loads of marzipan on Christmas cake, which she made herself, homemade Christmas cake. And I couldn't wait to get the marzipan off and get at the cake underneath. (laughs) (laughs) Notice the stress that we put on the word marzipan, which is different from the way Spanish people say it. So we have two words today with different stress, a hotel and marzipan. So those five nuts that are the healthiest are not the only nuts you can have. We've got some more here for you in case you don't know how to say these words in English. Other nuts 
and seeds. Now, doing research for this, I was surprised to notice that most nuts are in fact seeds, aren't they? Yes. We'll, we'll talk about that a bit later, but yeah. So we've, we've decided to call this list Other Nuts and Seeds. Right. Although the, nobody's going to be bothered if you mistake a nut for a seed, but technically they're not the same thing. And I was surprised that the first one on our list is in fact a seed, and it's the Brazil nut from the Amazon region, mainly cultivated originally in South America, although I suspect you can find them all over the world in different countries now. But one of my favorite nuts is a Brazil nut. I'll tell you a bit of trivia, one of my famous pieces of trivia about Brazil nuts. You don't want to eat too many Brazil nuts because there's something in them which in large doses is slightly toxic to really? human beings. Yes, it's a thing that you shouldn't overdose on, let's say. I mean, you can eat a lot. You'd have to eat like industrial quantities, but in theory, it can do you harm. There's a chemical, I can't remember what it is, but there's a chemical in Brazil nuts, which you have to be careful with. Oh, interesting. Well, I won't eat more than uh, more than a packet then next time. Another very popular nut that goes very well with beer, peanuts. In a bar, you'd have a beer and a few peanuts. And of course, we also make peanut butter from peanuts, which is common in the US because Americans like to eat peanut butter sandwiches, peanut butter and jelly, or as we say in British English, jam. Peanut butter and jelly sandwiches are wonderful. Craig, the big question. I'm a fan of peanut butter. You are too. With or without sugar? A bit like Nutella, eh? Do you like sugar in your peanut butter or one of these more modern versions that doesn't have sugar? I've, As you know, I've got a very sweet tooth, so it's always going to be the sugar option with me. And I've tried for years to stop putting sugar in tea and coffee and I just can't do it. I get to a limit and I can't go further. There's a line with me with sugar. So yeah, I'd, I'd go with sugar, definitely. Because these days it's easy to get peanut butter without sugar, even like Mercadona and Consume here in Spain, they're selling it. And I, I prefer it. For me, it's sweet enough on its own without adding sugar. I, I find the sugar ruins it for me. And it gets stuck to the roof of your mouth. The roof on a house is at the top. And you can also use that expression for your mouth. So the peanut butter goes up to the top of your mouth and sticks there and you have to get it out with your tongue. Peanut butter often gets stuck to the roof of your mouth. Have I ever told you about something I really like, which some people find a bit weird? Toast. And on the toast, peanut butter. So far, so good. That's normal. But peanut butter mixed with Marmite. Yeah, I remember you've said that before. Yeah, that doesn't appeal to me at all. I'm not keen on Marmite whatsoever. You've got to try. Just try it. You said the saltiness of the Marmite and the sweetness of the peanut butter yeah, that's goes just, together. Oh, there's something about it. Marmite, if you don't know, you might know it as Marmite if you're a Spanish speaker. Or Vegemite um, if you're in the Australia. Australia's version of it, also famous. It's a vegetarian yeast. That's levadura spread and i just love mixing it with peanut butter i don't know why but it creates this weird mixture which i love on toast another of my favorite nuts the pistachio nut i love pistachios especially with a, with a beer or something my all-time favorite i would say that i have a problem with pistachios i'm seriously addicted to them i'm not joking i have a problem i've bought packets you know, family size packets, as they call them. They're supposed to be for a family of four. And I eat them in one go. Me I hope alone. they don't have anything toxic in them that would affect you if you eat too many. I don't know. Something about insanity, I think I heard. <laughs> <laughs> Another popular nut is the Pine nut, P-I-N-E, the pine nut. And you often come across these small nuts in salads, for example. They're very common in salads and really nice when they're toasted in the oven and then sprinkled on a salad. In Spanish, piñones would be pine nuts. What about chestnuts, Craig? Do you like them? Chestnuts remind me of Christmas and the winter when it's very cold outside and maybe you walk along eating hot chestnuts in a bag or you roast chestnuts on an open fire on Christmas Day. Yeah, lovely. Just like the famous song, no? Which one's that? That Christmas one. Chestnuts roasting on an open fire. 
<laughs> etc. No. Jack Frost nipping at your nose. <laughs> you know it, yeah. <laughs> Nat King Cole. Nat King Cole, lovely song, yeah. Another one of my favourites, and I think this probably is my favourite, although I do like pistachios and peanuts too, cashew nuts, anacaludos in Spanish, are absolutely lovely. Yeah, I like cashews as well. And the next one on the list, acorns. Oh, by the way, you can see a list of these nuts if you are curious about the spelling. Go to inglespodcast.com slash 384 for this episode and you'll see a list of the vocabulary on nuts that we're talking about today. Can you eat acorns? Bellotas. You can. It's not common, but you can. The pigs do, don't they? Because lovely ham comes from pigs that eat acorns. That's right. Our listeners, above all, from Mectremaola from Badajoz and Cáceres know how important the acorn is, which is the symbol of Extremadura, by the way, uh, because there's lots of acorns in Extremadura. And in my humble opinion, that's probably why the best ham in the world is produced there, because the pata negra, you know, the blackfoot pigs, eat the acorns, which are all over the place, and give that jamón ibérico, the bellota, which is just unbeatable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's fantastic. The next one, though, I'm not sure what these are. I th- suspect they might be used to make clothes. They're flax seeds, F-L-A-X. Oh, they, right? they can be eaten. I, I eat them every every week, more or less. What do they look like? Are they small? Like seed. <laughs> <For me. laughs> All seeds look more or less the same, a different color. Um, you can even actually get them in different colors. I guess it depends how they dry them or process them. Semillas de lino. So the word linen, ah, lino, comes is the flax. material. Yeah, and yeah. it comes from flax. That's but right. before the cloth is made, you can eat the seeds before it gets that far. And they're very good for you. What I like to do with, with some seeds, such as flax seeds, and also the next one on our list, sunflower seeds. Sunflower is girasol. Pipas. Pipas, yeah. I put them both in porridge. Porridge is what you might say in Spanish is gachas de avena. So oats made with hot water or milk. So it turns into a kind of paste. Very typical British thing to have. But you don't, surely you don't eat that in the summer here. It's too hot. Too hot, no. Only in the winter. But in the winter. And I often mix flax seeds, sunflower seeds, and other types of seeds with it. Maybe chia seeds as well. Have you ever tried them? I have, yeah. Yeah, not my favourite, but I'd eat them. They're okay. Very good for you. See, that's the thing. Even if you don't like them, if you mix them in with things like yogurt, porridge, whatever, really good for you. And you don't even really know you're eating them, but they've got a lot of nutritional properties. And a nut that's very common in the area where we're recording this podcast here in Valencia, tiger nuts. Tiger nuts. And tiger nuts are used to make horchata de alboraya, which is very famous in this area and a lovely, sweet, nutty drink in the summer. And tiger nuts are more or less the size of a small hazelnut, aren't they? Yeah. Maybe a little bit smaller. Yeah. And if you ever come to the Valencia area, uh, you'll be able to not eat, but drink an horchata, a liquid form, but it's made from tiger nuts. I had never heard of them till I came here. Me Did neither. You? But you can't be in Valencia and not hear about horchata. It's, it's impossible. It's like the drink of Valencia. In fact, only a five minute drive from where we are recording this, you can drive out to the horchata fields in Alboraya and you can see the tiger nuts growing in the fields. We mentioned my dog earlier, Coco. And quite often when people stop us in the street and they say, oh, what's he called? I say Coco. They say, oh, like Coco Chanel. And I have to correct them and say, no, like coconut. (coughs) That's why he's called Coco. So did you name Coco after a coconut because he's a nutty dog? Yeah. He was named Coco in Spanish, coconut in English, because he looked exactly like a coconut when he was born. (laughs) He was this small kind of round thing with loads of kind of weird brown hair on it, on it after, well, not immediately when he was born, but after a couple of days and he looked like a coconut. So he got the name Coco, coconut. Nothing to do with Coco Chanel. 
But here's the, the question, Reza. Is a coconut really a nut or is it a fruit? And what's the difference? Well, you would think it was a nut since it's cocoa nut. You would think the the clue is in the name, right? If something's called cocoa nut, like a, like a pea nut is going to be a nut. Yeah, like a pine nut is going to be a nut. A cocoa nut is going to be a nut. Not necessarily. As Craig said earlier, it is, in fact, a fruit. Really? It's not a nut. And what's the difference then? How do we know if something is a fruit? Because there's another argument that with tomatoes, isn't there? Tomatoes, fruit or vegetable? Yeah, technically they're a fruit, aren't they? Not a yeah. vegetable. They're... Well, I did a bit of internet research and I'll tell you what I found. It said that a nut is a type of fruit. So yeah, it it, it is the same thing, but it's a type of fruit comprising a shell. A shell is a hard covering. S-H-E-L-L, and a single seed, one seed, not multiple seeds. There has to be just one seed in that shell. And the seed is the soft white pulp, correct? No, well, no, no, the seed becomes the nut. Ah, okay. So it may be soft when it starts off, but think of a pistachio. You've got the hard shell, you've got that little opening where you can kind of get your fingernail in something, you open that up. And what's inside? One pistachio. Never two. One. That's a nut. So a pistachio is a true nut. It's got the hard shell. And pistachio shells are very hard. You can break your fingernails on them, as I know, trying to get at them. <laughs> and inside, you've got the nut. So it is a type of fruit. A nut is a type of fruit. But if it's a single, a single seed, really, inside a hard shell that's when you can call it a nut so that's not the case of a coconut but it is the case of a pistachio and another little added differentiation also to be a true nut they do not split open to release their seeds when ripe so think about it lots of fruits have seeds inside something and when they're ripe r-i-p-e when they're mature ready to eat they open up automatically and the seeds come out not nuts nuts don't open up think about it you find pistachios walnuts almonds, almonds on the ground yeah. they don't open up automatically that's true that's what makes it a nut as well interesting i i didn't know that i've learned something that's interesting okay so obviously this the ones we call seeds are seeds you know sunflower flax chia seeds a coconuts a fruit yeah, some seeds though can be considered nuts. As I've explained, basically it is the seed of a fruit, but only if it's a single seed in a hard shell. That's the condition to technically call it a nut. But hey, listeners, don't worry. Uh, if you hear everybody else calling it a nut, you can call it a nut, even though uh, biologically we may not be accurate. Don't don't lose any sleep over it. Don't let these definitions drive you nuts. Now, to drive you nuts means to drive you crazy. We can use the expression to be nuts or to drive someone nuts when we want to call someone mad or crazy. You're nuts to do that. Why did you do that? That's nuts. That's crazy. But Craig, at the beginning, that we said that we were nuts about nuts. Well, we're nuts about podcasting. We're nuts about many things. What does it mean if we add the word about if you're nuts about something, you're very enthusiastic or obsessive, very keen on something. I'm nuts about podcasting. I'm nuts about chocolate. Reza's nuts about his dog, Coco, for example. What other things are you nuts about? I'm nuts about... Pistachios. <laughs> yeah, I've already mentioned that. I was going to say pistachios, but I've, I've already said nuts. <laughs> I'm nuts about good beer. I'm nuts about good, tasty beer. So I really appreciate getting a, a nice beer. So I'm probably about to offend loads of our listeners. So I always feel a bit kind of um, sad and disappointed when I'm handed a Cruz Campo beer. It's like, oh, oh dear. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, Mal. You don't have any. Well, Mal Cinco Estrellas is good, but yeah. Mal Clásica, bleh. Yeah. So when, whenever I am given a nice Turia beer, or an Alhambra, eh? Just to get back some of the Andaluth listeners, an Alhambra, good. I think great, you know, that really, that really encourages me. Give me a Cruz Campo, oh dear. And I think some of the darker beers, I think you can get a very nice dark Alhambra beer 
which is quite bitter and very brown in colour. And you can say it has quite a nutty flavour because nut is obviously a noun and nutty is the adjective that you can use to describe food, for example. Yeah, it's got a nutty flavour. Yes, some things don't necessarily have nuts in them, but as Craig said, they taste nutty, although they don't actually have nuts. For example, I quite often find that brown rice tastes nutty. Yes. So it's not nuts, it's rice, but it reminds you of nuts. It it's got a, a nutty, nutty taste. Flavor, and yeah. a nutty texture as well. That's true. And when Reza was speaking earlier about the difference between nuts and seeds and fruits, and he used the word nutshell, one word, N-U-T-S-H-E-L-L. The nutshell is outside of the nut and protects the nut. And that's the thing that Reza said often doesn't break open or split open. We can use that word in an idiom when you want to summarize something. For example, in a nutshell. If I'm telling you something and I want to make the explanation shorter, I can say, yeah, but, you know, in a nutshell, I'm in a much better situation now. Or, in a nutshell, climate change is a difficult problem to solve. So, if you want to summarize something in a few words, you can use the expression, in a nutshell. In a nutshell, let me say this. Craig, has anybody ever said that you were a nut job or a nut case or a fruit and nutcase, or just plain nutty. <laughs> yeah, I've been I've been called that a few times. I've been called a nutcase, which is a crazy person, a nut job, which is very similar, and a fruit and nutcase. Yeah, a crazy person, a bit mad, a bit off the wall, you could say, a bit different from the normal. And even the adjective nutty, which we already explained can also refer to a person. If you say a person's nutty, they're, they're a bit crazy. And there's a very typical collocation which refers to Craig and I, I guess, Nutty Professor. In fact, there was a very famous film in the 60s which made it really popular with, with um, Eddie Jerry, Eddie Jerry Murphy. Lewis. Oh, Jerry Lewis. Eddie Murphy made the remake, didn't he? He did, made the remake. Yeah. Some of you might know that, but way back in the 60s, the Nutty Professor. I know in Spanish you've translated it as El Profesor Chiflado. Yeah. So nutty means chiflao, you're crazy. So it's a very common collocation, the idea of a teacher who knows a lot about the subject, but apart from that, they're crazy. <laughs> they're a nutty professor. Another expression with nut is it's a tough nut to crack. Now, when you open a nut to eat it, it has the nutshell outside that you need to crack open to eat the nut. And if it's very hard, you can say it's tough, T O U. G-H. And the expression, a tough nut to crack, means it's a difficult problem to solve. I just use the example of climate change. I could say that climate change is a very difficult nut to crack. It's a different problem to solve. It's difficult to find a solution. Some nuts physically, we're not talking metaphorically now, physically are hard to crack, like Brazil nuts. So you'll need a nut cracker. You'll need some kind of instrument to crack it open. And I will always associate my dad with nuts because he loved nuts. Me too. And at Christmas time, he particularly liked nuts because Christmas is one of, one of those times when you got, you've got time to sit down and crack open the nuts with your nutcracker. But in his later years, particularly, I guess his, his hands didn't work quite as well as they, as they used to. And he found it difficult to open the nuts, particularly Brazil nuts. So he used to get little hammers and all different types of nutcrackers and he'd make a bit of a mess. And sometimes he'd like hammer the nuts beside the fireplace. Yeah. We had some tiles, azulejos in the fireplace. I remember my mom always said the typical kind of thing like, oh, you and your nuts again. Let me tell you this clearly. If you so much as mark my fireplace, I'll crack your nut open. She always said something like that to him. <laughs> She'd say, yeah, you go ahead. But like, you know, if he made a mess or if he hit the tiles too hard and he broke one of them with, with his hammer, that she would crack open his nut 
In other words, his head. She threatened to break his head open. So he put the nut on the tile and then hit it with a hammer. Yeah. Un- until my mum saw him and said, hey, you stop <laughs> that. Or I'm going to do the same to your nut. And your nut is your head. Now, I can remember when my dad did the same thing, but he, we had these silver nutcrackers. Well, they weren't real silver, but they used to open and close and then you press them and they crack the nut. And my dad, with Brazil nuts or hazelnuts, the nut shell would be flying across the room. And the next day, my mum would be hoovering the carpet because in the UK, you always have carpet. And you hear this because all the nut shells were going up in the hoover. And my mum was cursing and swearing at my dad. Craig, have you ever nutted? I'm using nut as a verb. Have you ever nutted? That's the past. Have you ever nutted someone? I haven't, but I've been nutted. Really? At school. Yeah. Wow. What happened? It's a way that somebody can hit your head with their head. So when you're fighting someone, instead of hitting someone with your fist, you would headbutt them. That's another verb, H-E-A-D-B-U-T-T. And the slang word for headbutting is to nut someone. Like a goat, two goats fighting would do the same thing. They bang their heads together. We would never do that. Craig and I, we like to use our nuts, use our heads, our brains for other purposes. So if you use your nut, your nuts, your brain, your head, you're thinking, you're doing something in a thoughtful way. You're actually giving it a bit of serious consideration. Another slang use of the word nut is to be used for your testicles. If you kick someone in the nuts, that's very painful because you're kicking them in the testicles. Now, if you translate into Spanish, you end up with the translation for eggs. But we don't say that in English. We would say, he's kicked me in the nuts. It's really painful. If you don't stop cracking the nuts on the tiles, Mr. Shah, I'm going to kick you in the nuts. And one combination of words, in other words, a collocation, which is very common, is nuts and bolts. It has two meanings. It has a a physical meaning. It will be tuercas y tornillos in Spanish. So a nut can be a round thing which has a hole in the middle and you put the bolt, which is similar to a screw, in the middle of it. So it's used when you're working with many things, metal, wood, etc., and you want to join things together. You use nuts and bolts. It keeps things together. So metaphorically... It means what keeps things together. So if you talk about the nuts and bolts of English teaching, for example, you might be talking about good pronunciation, reasonable command of grammar, good base of vocabulary. They are the nuts and bolts of good English teaching. There are other things, but if you haven't got that, you're you're not going to go very far. That's what keeps things together. So the nuts and bolts of something keep things together. And if you want to learn and improve the nuts and bolts of the English language, then you need to, in a nutshell, listen to this podcast. And while you're doing that and you're checking your vocabulary, Rez has included a link to some lovely music that you can listen to on YouTube, which is, is it Tchaikovsky? It's Tchaikovsky, the Nutcracker. The Nutcracker Suite. We've linked to that in the show notes at inglespodcast.com slash 384. So that's It's for us this week. Before we go out the door, it's your turn to practice your English, so we would love to hear from you. Please send us a voice message, and Reza will tell you how you can do that. Yes, you can record your voice at SpeakPipe. So go to www.speakpipe.com slash English podcast. Be warned, there's a time limit Occasionally, people have tried to speak for too long. Can you remind me what the time limit is for all your messages? 90 seconds. 90 seconds. So you've got a minute and a half to get your message in on SpeakPipe. In a nutshell. Yep, exactly. Or you could send us an email. You can send me an email at craig, C-R-A-I-G, at inglespodcast.com. Or to reach Reza, write to belfastreza, R-E-Z-A, at gmail.com. We also invite you to visit the Mansion Inglés online store where you can find some courses, material, lots of things to help you practice your English online. 
As ever, we'd like to thank all of you who help us by supporting the podcast through the Patreon scheme. If you're interested, you could join the program. People donate money. It's as little as $1.20 per month. The 20 is to pay the VAT tax. And as a thank you, you get instant access to recent transcriptions, audio transcriptions. If you're interested, have a look. Go to patreon.com slash podcast. And we'd like to welcome our new Patreon supporters who have been joining us over the summer, the last month or two. And they are Mick Olm. Thank you very much. Juan David Guerrero. Uziv Uziv. So cool, they named him twice. Uziv Uziv. Israel Arguello. Andre Coman. John. Or Juan. Must be John, right? I bet it's John. I bet it's John. Gloria Rodas. Juanjo Cuyas. Adrian Caraballo and Maria. Special thanks to Maria who's donating more than the minimum of $1.20. Thank you to all of you and for everyone sponsoring us on Patreon. What's next week, Meza? Next week we've got Eight Common Colloquial Expressions, Part 7. We look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you very much for listening to us this week. If you enjoy this podcast, please remember to recommend it to your friends. And until next time, it's goodbye from me. And it's goodbye from me. The music in this podcast is by Pitts. The track is called See You Later.